Okay, I want to talk to you now about what exactly is ground and pound. be a lot of confusion with some people what it is. It's a uh, UFC technique that they use when they get somebody off their feet. They mount them and they start punching downward. Multiple, multiple times until the ref stops it or your opponent gives up. Now, people say, well, it, this is taught in uh, martial arts studios. Uh, uh, peop some people claim it's uh, taught in judo schools, karate, taekwondo, whatever. It's not. Well, first of all, you don't kick or punch in judo. If you're taking a judo class, they do not teach you to punch or kick. Yes, they teach you how to take your opponent off with their feet, mount them for submission holds. Now, if you're in a school and they're teaching you to punch, and they're teaching you an MMA style or a UFC style along with the judo, same thing with karate, never do you mount somebody in karate or taekwondo. If you want proof of this, just go to your next karate tournament or look it up on YouTube. You never see sparring sessions where you're in karate, where the guy gets off his feet, mounts the other guy, and just starts punching down. You see that in the UFC. But not in a normal karate tournament. Again, if they're teaching it, well, they're teaching the MMA style, not traditional karate or judo style, which is a martial art. Uh, now I know there are two sports sides to every type of, almost every type martial arts. I know Taekwondo has a sports side to it and a self-defense side, which is very effective. Now you, a lot of techniques, they can't use it in the sports side. Same thing with uh, Judo, there is a self-defense judo that you're not going to see in the Olympics because it's way too dangerous. And that's what self-defense is. This is what the martial arts were designed for, self-defense. Defend yourself against an enemy attacking you that is much bigger and stronger than you. Like in judo, you don't really use muscle against muscle. It's leverage. This is why a smaller person, man or woman, can, will be able to throw or flip a, somebody much bigger than them. But the key in self-defense, and this is important to remember when you're talking about ground and pound. Now they do it in MMA, why? Because they want to win the match. Self-defense, the only thing you want to win, situation you want to win, is to get away. That's all. That's all you have to do. You don't have to be de declared a winner. Just get away from your attacker. This is why you don't mount a person and just start punching them down until they say, I give up. You give them down, you get them down, you do whatever it takes, and you get away from them. And this is why it's not taught in a regular judo class. I know there are st strikes. You can strike somebody down, but it's usually with a reverse punch or you, know, you flip them, you might punch them in the jaw, punch them in the ribs, and then you get away. You don't want to leave your feet in self-defense situation. You're just asking for trouble if you do that. Now, somebody once, this is funny, somebody once emailed me and said, uh, well, reverse punches don't work. Really? I mean, really? Maybe we ought to build this person a time machine. Send them back to ancient China, where the monks are developing Kung Fu, and tell them, Look, guys, you're doing it all wrong. That punch won't work. Oh, come on. No, it's, no, I know it's not practical for every situation, but you can get a lot of power behind a reverse punch. Same thing with stances. In MMA, do you ever see... Uh, karate stances, like a horse stance or a cat stance, or those are taekwondo stances. 
you see him go out in a boxer stance, right? That's not martial arts. It's a boxer. It's a boxing stance. I'm sure some people will say, well, those stances don't work. Well, maybe they ought to go back in the same time machine then and tell them, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Anyway, getting back to the ground and pound, uh, if you're going to take a legitimate judo class, they teach it, they're only going to teach flips, throws, joint locks. They're not going to teach kicking or punching. Especially to mount somebody and just keep punching down. They, that came from street fighting. It didn't come from the martial arts. Striking downward, yes, with one punch or two punches while you're standing to get away, or even kicking. Yeah, that can happen, but uh, definitely not uh, in a self-defense situation you want to do that. And again, if you are taking it, the class, and they are showing you that, this definitely is a traditional style. And this is a problem I th see with MMA, and especially women's MMA. Is they're teaching a style that's just good for one thing, and that's the octagon. Out in the street, uh, the type of style just isn't going to work to a certain degree. Why I say that is because it's that style is, for one thing, it's a sport. Just like boxing isn't really going to work in a self-defense. I mean, you know, you're not going to stand there and box a guy, throw jabs, right crosses, hooks. You know, again, you're, I mean, you can't throw hooks. You can throw punches. But you're not going to uh, want it to prolong it for any length of time. You want it to get over with quickly. And this is what the martial arts, things like karate and judo are for. You dispose of your attacker the quickest way possible. This is why wrestling isn't that good for self-defense. I'm talking about the amateur wrestling. You know, where you take the, tackle the guy and take him down. Because uh, that's about pins, you know. There's not going to be a referee around who's going to on the street they can say okay you're pinned but uh if you want to take karate take it a traditional way you want to learn self-defense have any comments just leave them below